In fact, understanding what the theorem says is probably more difficult and uh, more interesting, definitely more interesting than the, the proof itself, <clears throat> because this is just going to be some technical stuff, which we've already used over and over again. Uh, but nevertheless, I want to show you how it works. So uh, we start out from the radon transform. We start off from the radon transform and um, we take the Hn minus one over two norm uh, on the cylinder because Rf is a data function. Now, this is the same as the integral of the unit circle, uh, one plus sigma squared n minus one over two Rf uh, hat of theta and sigma squared d sigma d theta, and uh, that's just according to the definition of the hn minus 1 over 2. Now, of course, here we have rf hat of theta and sigma, and as usual, we apply Fourier slice. So this is the 2 pi to the n minus 1, which I get over here, integral over sn minus 1, integral over r, and here's just, the inter here's just Fourier slice. Um, that's just Fourier slice, right? Uh, so I plug this in and uh, nothing else changed. Now we go for this integral over r he over here. And uh, we already had that before. If we in, if in this integral we have over here, we let sigma go to minus sigma and s go to minus s, uh, then nothing changes. So uh, the positive part of r gives exactly the same, um, and the negative um, part of r here give exactly the same contribution. So we can write this as two, two uh, twice, because we're now integrating from zero to infinity, and everything stays as before. Uh, now we have sigma times theta over here, and uh, next thing we've already done several times, let's go from, um, from polar coordinates from sigma times theta to rectangular coordinates. <clears throat> so we set psi equals uh, sigma times theta, integrate instead of polar coordinates, we integrate over Rn, <clears throat> and uh, the factor doesn't change. Uh, we get an f hat of psi squared now, absolute value of uh, f hat of psi squared now over here. Uh, sigma is uh, the uh, norm of psi, so I plug this in over here. And uh, I get an integrating an in integration factor from the substitution as, uh, norm, as uh, norm psi to the 1 minus n, which I write as norm psi squared uh, to the 1 minus n over 2. And uh, this is equation star. This is the same as the norm of RF, and I will refer to this a little bit later. Now, um, let me first note that uh, replacing uh, the is one minus n over two, uh, n is definitely larger than one. So this is a fraction. And uh, replacing norm psi squared by uh, by one plus norm psi squared makes everything smaller. So if I do that substitute, or if I plug this in here, then the value uh, be, uh, gets smaller on the right hand side. So uh, it's larger than this one over here. But now you see that one plus norm psi squared, this one and this one cancels. This is nothing but uh, to um, up to a factor, the integral over Rn, uh, absolute value of f hat of psi squared d psi. Now, again, using Parseval, this is the same as the L2 norm of f. This would be the L2 norm of f hat. It's the same as the L2 norm of f. That's what Parseval says. And up, up to a factor, the uh, the norm of Rf is larger than the norm of F, and uh, that's the left-hand side of the equation we wanted to prove. Okay, uh, for the right-hand side, so for the second inequality, um, let's again start out from star, and I hope that this is exactly what is up here. Yes, that's I just wrote it again. And um, this time, uh, let's split the integral over Rn, which we have over here, in one part where the norm of psi is larger or equal to 1, 
and one part where the norm of psi is smaller or equal to one. Now, first thing, let's go for uh, if norm of psi is larger than one, then um, uh, we I, I take these these two together. Then this is the same as one plus norm psi squared over norm psi squared, which is nothing but one plus one over norm psi squared. Now, if norm psi is larger than one, then this over here is smaller than two. So this is bounded by two to the n minus one over two. Um, so uh, what I can do is I can, uh, from this integral, I can take the whole thing over here out and estimate it by two to the n minus one over two. What's left is just the L2 norm of F hat. And uh, again, using Parseval, this is the same as the L2 norm of F. So up to a constant, the inner integral norm psi smaller or equal to one is bounded by the L2 norm of F. Now, um, what if the norm of psi is smaller or equal to one? Um, yeah, let's look at this one. And uh, what we have then is, um, yeah, th th this integral over here with, with the uh, domain norm psi smaller or equal to one. I take out the maximum, the supremum of f hat of psi in the, um, um, I take out the supremum of f hat of psi. And uh, remember that uh, the, uh, uh, that f hat of psi is bounded by the L1 norm of f. Okay, uh, so doing that, um, I'm left with the integral of Rn and uh, of this guy over here. Uh, not Rn, but a norm psi smaller than one of this guy over here. And uh, again, assume that I took the f the supremum of the f hat already out. Now, this is a singularity of order n minus one. And um, remember, we are integrating in Rn. So um, in Rn, this is in fact, uh, 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 this is integratable and it has a finite value. So a singularity of order n minus one can be integrated over. So whatever it is, this um, integral over here has a finite value. Okay, now um, I took the supremum of the f hat of psi out. So it's something like this over here. And in the usual fashion, this is, uh, uh, I plug in, um, I forgot the constant, of course. So it's uh, one over, square it's one over two pi to the n minus one over uh, two to the n over two unfortunately i'm sorry but the the, the constant doesn't play a role here because um, we are not caring about constants anyway so um this is the integral over f of, uh, of f <laughs> by definition the integral over f of x e to the minus i x psi dx up to the constant i forgot and um, since we assume that the support of f is in a ball uh, around zero of radius one, we can restrict the integration to that domain. Okay, so uh, now I take the absolute value in, uh, the e to the minus ix psi disappears, and uh, we write the f of x as, as one times f of x dx, and uh, as in uh, as every time when you want to uh, bound the L1 norm by the L2 norm, uh, this is the uh, by Cauchy Schwartz, this is uh, the integral over k, <laughs> integral over 1 dx, which is just pi, the um, area of the unit circle, uh, to the 1 half times the L2 norm of f. So again, that is also bounded by the L2 norm. So everything is in fact bounded by, the, so the inner so the inner integral over here, the integral over the, um, the inside of the uni unit circle is bounded by L2, the, uh, the L2 norm of f, the outside is also bounded by the L2 norm of f. So that means that the norm of Rf in uh, in, as a whole is bounded by a new constant times uh, the L2 norm of F. And that's exactly what we wanted to prove. 
Okay, so the very nice result is uh, that computerized tomography uh, gives us a problem that's really very, in a way, very simple to invert. Uh, we have a lot of inversion algorithms, and uh, next we'll look at how can that be implemented. Um, so uh, we'll, in particular, we'll answer the question. Assume that uh, we want to see, we want, uh, we want to be sure that we are not missing a tumor of size let's say five millimeter, then how exact do we have to measure? How must the computer tomography device be constructed? That's a very important question. And in fact, we are able to, we will be able to answer that using Shannon's sampling theory. Another thing, and there we'll a little bit come back to the analysis of the radon transform, is uh, we'll also look at how a change in devices also leads to a change in mathematics. And uh, we'll take a little glimpse at uh, three-dimensional tomography, so, so for special algorithms for uh, the Röntgen transform, and uh, very few, very sparse data. And uh, yeah, that's what we'll do after the Christmas break. Anyway, uh, I wish you uh, early Merry Christmas. And uh, really, I have you, I wish you to have a, a really good, great Christmas break. Um, I wish you all the best. Uh, stay healthy. And uh, we'll meet again in the new year on January 11. So hope to see you then.